Hi everyone, welcome to today's session here at Zerdocon Virtual 2020. This session is sponsored by Microsoft and titled A Customer's Guide to Disaster Recovery in the Cloud with Zerdo and Microsoft Azure. As a quick introduction, my name is Andy Fernandez and I'm a product marketing manager here at Zerdo and I'm joined by Richard Bailey, the VP of IT Operations at Pruitt Health. Before we get started, if you have any questions for Richard or myself, feel free to simply put them in the chat box and we'll answer them as soon as possible. Also, this session will be available on demand afterwards. Now let's get started. So I think we're all pretty much sick and tired of hearing how you know, every organization is going through an accelerated digital transformation because of COVID. And I think every email subject line begins with the word COVID. So you know, what we want to look at here is just take an objective look at where organizations sit today, what type of challenges we face. But the one thing that hasn't changed, you know, before or after COVID is the fact that organizations are still striving for 24 seven availability, your customers, your, your, your employees, your partners, and even yourself, you're all expecting 24 seven availability and to make sure that you're continuously reducing downtime and data loss as an organization. Now, this is where the challenge comes in. Just in the last couple of months, you've been forced to have to support a much larger remote, remote workforce. And this means you know, new hardware possibly, especially new SaaS tools, and also new security components as well, both from an education perspective, but also the tools to be able to protect your organization from additional cybercrime as well. Now you're still facing the, the traditional year over year growth of data, but it's sprawled all over the place, especially now that you have a distributed remote workforce. So there's a lot of challenges uh, going on right now, but the one thing that hasn't changed either is the fact that you still have strained resources, right? Your, your budget isn't finite. You probably have the same, if not less of a budget, limited personnel and time. So how do you continue to strive to reduce downtime, but also solve for the challenges that you have today? That's where, you know, it's been a, a significant issue for a lot of organizations. But the reason that we have to continue to reduce downtime and data loss is just because of the growing impact that a cost of disruption to the business has. So we sponsored a survey uh, from IDC uh, last year. And in this survey, IDC went out and surveyed over 500 organizations, uh, VPs of ITs, directors and administrators and even uh, engineers of all of these organizations. And they asked a lot of questions around data protection, around backup, around disaster recovery, and even scenarios like cyber attacks. And what we found was that the average cost of downtime per hour across all industries and organizational sizes was $250,000. With a collective eight hours of downtime per year, it would cost an organization over $2 million a year, just an unplanned downtime. Now, if you think about the fact that this was done across small to large organizations. If you're a large enterprise, that number is a lot larger. So it's something that cannot be ignored. So what this does it, even in today's environment, it makes disaster recovery more important than ever. But you, the, the solutions that you have today aren't perfect. There are a lot of significant challenges that come from disaster recovery, not just from an economic perspective, but also from a technological perspective. You know, in that same survey, we asked folks, what are your biggest challenges with respect to disaster recovery? And these are the top five. Data transfer migration, cost and budget of disaster recovery, orchestration, training, and migration. So what we're seeing is people are having issues uh, having the right personnel, having the right technical capabilities to do so, being able to migrate those workloads and having the right workflows to be able to do so, and they're having trouble managing the cost. And a close six was actually testing as well. Organizations are having a massive challenge uh, in, in being able to perform effective failover testing. Now, this is where it becomes interesting because a lot of organizations are now moving towards the cloud when it comes to disaster recovery. And it's true, cloud first is now the norm. 80% uh, of all organizations have a cloud first strategy. Now, I will say this, there's a big difference between having a cloud first strategy and actually successfully implementing and moving operations to the cloud, including disaster recovery. But it does help. The cloud helps you reduce costs. It helps you drive growth, makes your organization more agile, especially from a development perspective. And it gives you a more scalable IT and more innovation as well. Now, 
you have to be very prescriptive about this move and about how do you have to evaluate that. So as an organization, when you decide that you want to move to the cloud, specifically for disaster recovery, you have to have the right decision making process. You need to understand why you're moving to the cloud. Because once you understand why, you're going to be able to make much more logical decisions when it comes to disaster recovery in the cloud. So the first thing you want to do is be able to build out a timeline and a model to compare the cost of your current on-premise solution versus using the public cloud, something specifically like Microsoft Azure as your disaster recovery target site. So you need to be able to define a need understand why am I doing this and when do I want to implement this then you want to be able to successfully identify all of the areas of the cost build an appropriate model validate that data modify it as needed and then compare it to the to something like Microsoft Azure so it's really important that you define this first before you make your move and as we saw in that timeline one of the most critical elements is that you accurately identify your cost areas that you know exactly what your secondary site your on-premises site that you're simply using to replicate for disaster recovery what is it costing you you have to look at the facility costs the IT administration costs your hardware costs your actual backup availability and disaster recovery solutions and the software that it, that it's requiring right look at direct costs at labor and at, at time spent on doing so because this is going to give you full visibility into making the right decision not just whether you're trying to move to the cloud but also what type of strategy do you want to employ when you move to something like microsoft azure so to kind of accelerate this conversation, what we've seen is uh, there, there are very key common char characteristics between all organizations that it makes a lot of sense for them to move DR to the cloud. And some of those characteristics are the fact that they're seeing a very unique and high amount of data growth and sprawl. They're trying to move from a capital focused or a capex focused model to an opex focused model and really just look at consumption and pay as you go. A lot of these organizations also have a digital transformation initiative that requires a move to the cloud. Uh, but they're also looking to exceed the quality of their SLAs and, and meet and exceed their RTOs and their RPOs when it comes to disaster recovery and moving that towards the cloud. But there's a limited budget there, right? So the re one of the primary reasons why people move to the cloud apart from OPEX is to actually reduce the cost of what they're trying to do as well. And in this case, it being disaster recovery operations. But also, it comes down to resources as well. We all have limited amounts of time uh, and labor to spend on these things. And the cloud seems like an excellent option for those organizations to consolidate uh, and start off with the disaster recovery. And, and it's showing, right? These, this is the, a common characteristics of organizations, and it really reflects a lot of the organizations that we see today. There are very few organizations where it makes more sense for them to remain on premises. And that's showing, right? If you look at a lot of the, the surveys that are done across the board, Cloud disaster recovery is the first choice that organizations are choosing, and it's the most important thing. So it's clear that it makes sense. And if your organization has those same characteristics, you really have to think hard about why you're doing it and then really evaluate what are your options. And so what we're going to do now is kind of evaluate a few options when it comes to Microsoft. And the first one is, you know, the most straightforward one, which is simply using Microsoft Azure as a DR site, right? Our infrastructure as a service. Now, apart from an economic decision, why, what makes Azure so unique when it comes to disaster recovery? Well, Azure has more global regions than any other cloud provider. They're offering the scale needed to bring applications closer to users around the globe. They're preserving data residency and offering you comprehensive compliance and resilience options for your customers. And there are over 60 regions worldwide and it's available in 140 countries. So when you think about comparing the reliability of simply having your one secondary DR site versus having this entire availability that Azure gives you, it's pretty much a no brainer, especially if you're in an, in an area at risk, uh, specifically for hurricanes or any other type of natural disaster. It makes a lot of sense to choose a trusted public cloud provider provider with the reliable infrastructure that Azure has. But there's more to it than just reliability, right? Uh, there's a lot of benefits to disaster recovery in the cloud, specifically with Azure. And the first one's obvious. One, not only is directly moving your DR to the public cloud the lowest cost option, but it's also the easiest OpEx model. So you're able to really just pay what your organization is consuming. 
but also you're now re re reducing or removing the entire need for maintenance. So you're not having to pay for maintenance costs or the labor required. And ultimately, if you if you compare it to what you have with your secondary site, it, the public cloud or Azure gives you unlimited scale. So you have on demand resources available to you at all times. And we've already talked about the vast network of servers that are ensuring against failure with Azure. And ultimately, it also helps you fulfill the 321 rule, right? So you can meet your data protection demands with offsite storage. So if you look at the, the traditional organization where it makes sense for them to choose directly doing DR with public cloud or specifically with Azure, it's when cost and scalability are priorities. And you're definitely moving towards an OpEx model, especially companies that are having to have a full infrastructure refresh upcoming. You, sometimes you don't have the cash flow to be able to pull that off. So you want to make sure that you move to consumption specifically before it happens. But also it's organizations that are looking beyond just disaster recovery. They're looking for additional capabilities within DevOps uh, and, and really utilizing the machine learning capabilities and enterprise application delivery capabilities that Azure gives you. And when it comes to specifically just moving your DR operations to the public cloud, you want to have a, a staff that's ready to be able to still continue with business at you, as usual, uh, to be able to perform the testing, to perform the, re the disaster recovery operations that you need to reduce disruptions. But this isn't just the only uh, um, strategy you can enable when using Azure. There's actually another one that's very interesting, and, and this really applies to large scale enterprises, and that's actually a VMware as a service or VMware on Azure. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, it's still Azure, but the difference is you can actually run your native VMware workloads on Microsoft Azure, meaning that you can maintain the VMware policies and configurations that you have right now without having to refactor and re-architect your applications before moving to Azure. If you're doing it specifically, just do it yourself into the cloud. But you still get the benefits of infrastructure as a service, the reliability, the scale, and the operational model that's so appealing of Azure. And then you still get your dedicated cloud, high speed, low latency access for your needs. So what, where does it make sense for an organization to pursue this strategy? Well, if you're looking for the resources and the capabilities of Azure or IS, but you also have dedicated hardware for application needs or you need dedicated hardware, and you still have very complex VMware environment uh, that you slowly have to transition to instead of having to start all over with just moving public cloud, moving to the public cloud. But you also have a cloud initiative, right? So these are the core uh, characteristics of when it makes sense for your company to choose that. Now, what I'm gonna do now is now I'm gonna introduce Richard Bailey uh, as discussed, and he's a Zerto customer. And as the VP of IT operations, Richard has enabled this course himself. And he's been able to successfully move to Azure using Zerto. So without further ado, I wanna introduce Richard, and I wanna thank him for his time and the opportunity to speak with him. Thanks, Richard, here you go. Hey, thanks, Andy. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm Richard Bailey. Uh, I've been an IT professional for over 25 years, and um, have worked with cloud computing since uh, the mid 90s when we were moving everything out of the cloud and um, then we moved made the move to to virtualization and had uh, moved into our virtual first strategies and um, now we're moving everything back from a virtual first into the cloud and a cloud first strategy so um, I've been around a lot of data center migration projects and um, BCDR has always been a um, uh, you know part of that. So thanks for having me. So <clears throat> Pruitt Health. Um, Pruitt Health is a um, healthcare organization that uh, is uh, focused on long-term care. Um, you know, we're regional in, in the Southeast. We're in four states. Uh, we've got a, um, you know, multiple provider locations caring for over 24,000 patients, uh, 16,000 employees. Um, company's been around for for over 50 years, um, and uh, you know these these are challenging times for long-term care. Um, so, um, you know, it's been been an interesting couple of months, uh, to say the least. And um, you know, we we are. Um, definitely a 24 seven operation and have, you know, extremely high expectations um, 
from uh, our, our healthcare providers to keep uh, everything up and running and available at all times. So uh, DR at, at Pruitt Health, we had, um, yeah, we were maintaining a co-location um, site for DR doing sand to sand replication, um, essentially uh, you know, a duplication of production hardware. And we were facing um, uh, some significant you know, capital expenditures to uh, keep up with the growth that we were having in um, production. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, when, when we took a look at uh, what the staff we would have to bring on and continue to maintain uh, kind of a complex uh, sand to sand environment and the limitations that that um, introduced, we, we took a hard look at uh, DR as a service and or what we could do with just um, infrastructure as service in, in the public cloud. And so um, just the kind of the exact same thought processes that Andy uh, just mentioned, uh, you know, we were uh, we, we landed on uh, DR on infrastructure as a service as the right solution uh, for Pruitt Health. We, we had some specific um, infrastructure requirements in, in our environment where DR as a service um, either became cross, cost prohibitive for those service providers to, to meet those requirements um, or they just simply couldn't support those at all. So, um, you know, we we became familiar with Zerto um, and this um, this product that allows you to really have data center mobility. Um, you know, from a from a virtual environment, um, you could move uh, data centers, you know, to the public cloud, to another private cloud, to from public cloud to other public cloud. So, uh, really was an easy decision once we um, you know, peeled back the layer. So we, um, we the, the environment that we're working on now, we have around 300 virtual machines that we're replicating into Azure. Um, we, we have around a thousand total uh, virtual machines um, on-prem, but uh, 700 of those are, uh, target devices from a, a streamed image, essentially a VDI environment where we virtualize our applications uh, across those four states. So, um, you know, app, app virtualization is uh, definitely something critical to Pruitt Health. We support over 200 applications for multiple business lines. Um, so not only long-term care, but all of the business lines that support long-term care like pharmacy services, uh, rehabilitation, home care, hospice, um, and we, we have our own construction company. So lots of different needs, business needs that we support. Um, we, uh, let's see. Yep, so all different applications, financial back office applications. We, you know, so it is a, a complex uh, world that we live in today. Um, and so tools like Zerto are, are critical to uh, making, simplifying as much as possible. So, all right. So we were in a, a, a VMware Site Recovery Manager and um, we moved from uh, Site Recovery Manager to, um, you know, Zerto replication into Azure. Uh, much easier to maintain, much simpler than, um, having to uh, deal with the, you know, the complexities of sand to sand replication and, and um, having oftentimes having to um, reconfigure a lot of the backend storage to support uh, the, the, the replication requirements um, or to adjust to changing uh, you know, business applications. So uh, definitely uh, a much better approach from a, a, just a, a virtual machine to virtual machine replication uh, at like Zerto. Uh, we did, we were able to reduce uh, DR testing. Um, so we can, we can complete a, a disaster recovery test 
definitely in, in a few hours, whereas uh, it would take multiple days and multiple personnel to, to accomplish that in the old solution. And, um, you know, we don't have to maintain our uh, co-location anymore. Uh, so uh, it would the, the on-demand um, capacity that we get from a public cloud, you know, allows us to save cost from, uh, so we don't have to replicate uh, a thousand virtual machines that we run on prem. We only replicate the 300, and we're able to, uh, you know, expand that common image that's part of those 300 virtual machines into, uh, you know, a thousand at failover time. So much more efficient and less to maintain. Thank you, Richard. We really appreciate your involvement and in being able to tell us your story of how you're able to move to Microsoft Azure using Cerdo. Now, we've taken a look at exactly how organizations should approach the decision-making process when it comes to replacing their secondary on-premises site uh, with Microsoft Azure for disaster recovery in the cloud. And we've also looked at uh, which strategy to employ depending on what, what type of organization you're dealing with and also how a customer of ours is able to, been, is able to do it. But another important piece is how, how does Zerto actually get you there? What are the capability and the core tenants of the IT resilience platform that make it so easy to perform this operation? Well, what do we actually do? Zerto converges cloud mobility, disaster recovery, and backup solutions into a single, simple, scalable IT resilience platform. What makes us work? Well, if you think about it at the deepest level, one of our main differentiators is our own replication technology. And our replication, it's near synchronous replication that sits at the hypervisor level, right? This isn't a array to array or SAM based replication or even DB replication. This is replication that sits at the hypervisor level. And what we're doing and what Zerto does, it observes changes using change block tracking and creates checkpoints every five seconds and are replicating these changes in real time. It all starts with the ZVM or the Zerto Virtual Manager, which integrates with your hypervisor management platform of choice, and it's the interface that you interact with, which is extremely easy to use. But you also have the VRA, which is an extremely important component, which is meaning it's the virtual replication appliance. And this is built in WAN optimization, and it's what replicates every change that is being generated in real time. This means that there are no snapshots or scheduling. It's a software only approach. There's no vendor lock-in, right? You're not stuck with the storage vendor and you also don't have to refresh and maintain an appliance in your data center. It's an extremely simple install and there's no snapshots that are required. So, you know, if you actually have a lot more questions around, you know, how does Zerto work? We have an on-demand session available after this that already went through and it's called the Zerto 101, a technical introduction to the Zerto IT resilience platform. I highly recommend, if, especially if you're new to Zerto, you take a look and it's a, a 30 minute overview of all things Zerto, specifically around our replication technology and what makes it so easy to move and replicate VMs to the cloud. But also, uh, take a look at another session titled uh, how, to, how to Zerto Replaces Recover Point. And if you take a look at that session, it's going to give you a lot of good insights, too, from a disaster recovery perspective. But let's keep talking about Zerto in, in the sense of Microsoft Azure. So, you know, we've talked over the replication. We've, we've kind of at a high level looked at the Zerto Virtual Manager and the Virtual Replication Appliance. But one of the key things is, is how well Zerto integrates with Microsoft Azure. You know, you can see the architecture on the production side is exactly the same as if you were replicating to another Hyper-V site or VMware. Now, the source site just has the ZCA, or we call the Zerto Cloud Appliance, which manages the replication. Zerto continually, continuously replicates the blob storage in Azure, and no VMs are built until there is a failover. All the replica disks are stored in page blobs, the journal data is stored in block blobs, and you have your VPN or express route for connectivity. So. You know, the beauty of Zerto is that it easily allows you to replicate to Azure without a lot of work, really. And, you know, we've looked at the replication technology, what it consists of, what are its differentiators. But another very important piece of the Zerto story is its journal and the ability to recover within the journal as well. The journal, think of it as a TiVo. And what it does, it allows you to specifically go back to those checkpoints we talked about. You know, whether it was five seconds ago, 10 seconds ago, five days ago. With, with the Zerto journal, you're able to simply rewind and recover. So take an incident like ransomware, where it hits you at this specific point in time. With Zerto, you can simply 
rewind and recover back five seconds ago. And you can recover entire sites, entire applications, virtual machines, and even single files. But one of the most important things about Zerto as well is it's not just disaster recovery. It actually allows you to recover not just across the short term, you know, your, your zero day to 30 day scenarios, but also the long term by unlocking it to secondary storage as well. And, and that's a really big piece as well. So, you know, we've looked at the replication, we've looked at the journal, but another very important piece is being able to recover your applications consistently. And that's another Zerto differentiator and what we call a virtual protection group. Now, if you think about the virtual protection group, think of all your multi VM applications. Uh, if you have a traditional backup approach or even legacy DR, and that requires snapshots, you're now essentially having to deal with very complex uh, operations to be able to consistently recover a multi-VM application. But with Zerto, you simply create and designate the VMs to an application or what we call a virtual protection group. And that way, it allows you to set your, your RPOs, your configurations, and easily manage and orchestrate these settings. Now let's illustrate this a little bit, right? Let's talk about a scenario where you actually have to recover one of these multi VM applications. Well, with traditional applications, if you're employing a daily backup, you know, that same application, all of its VMs are being copied at different checkpoints or at different copies points. So what this does is it makes it very, very difficult for you to recover this quickly, but it also produces an inconsistent recovery. So if you can imagine an entire site scenario or in a ransomware scenario where multiple applications are encrypted, it's going to take your IT organization a lot of time to find the common denominator of checkpoints for each application and to scale that across applications. So it's tough. But with Zerto, it's different, right? As we talked about, with these virtual replication groups that you simply designate the VMs of the application and configure the settings, you're able to, cre to treat the application as an entire stack at granular checkpoints of every five seconds. So this is a really key differentiator and something that allows you to not only recover these applications consistently, but to do it extremely quick. So, We've looked at a lot of key components and differentiators of Zerto, right? We've looked at its replication, the fact that it sits at the hypervisor level, that it's software only, uh, that it has scale-out architecture, but also the journal itself and, and how easy it is to rewind and recover applications and, and treat applications consistently as well. We know we also looked at how easily and deeply integrated Zerto is with Microsoft Azure as well, especially if that is your considered DR target site of choice. But another very important piece that makes Zerto so easy is the fact that no matter how many sites you have, uh, no matter how many VMs you have, it's all managed through one simple interface and experience. Think about it, you know, your disaster recovery, your backup and your mobility use cases, all of your protection status within one single um, interface and experience. That's what makes it so important. And, and it's not just about from a management perspective, but also around giving you complete visibility. With Zerto, you have full visibility across your hybrid and multi-cloud um, sites with Zerto Analytics. Now, Zerto Analytics is built in uh, to the platform, so it's really included in, in, in your purchase. And what's an additional differentiator is the fact that you can actually access it anywhere. So it's browser enabled and you can uh, access it via your phone or any type of iOS application as well. So that's what makes it accessible as well. And there's a lot of historical data, a lot of performance data that gives you a lot of insights. But one of the biggest value adds that it has is the fact that it actually allows you to forecast future resource needs. So let's say that you're already a Zerto customer, but you're simply just using a, a secondary site or a data center for your uh, you know, disaster recovery needs. Or you're not even a customer, you're just somebody who's exploring Zerto, but are curious as to what are the Zerto storage and infrastructure requirements if you were to move those VMs and protect them in Azure. Now there's a specific capability and a tool within Zerto Analytics that's also available uh, to non-customers and it's called the Resource Planner. And within the Resource Planner, you simply designate the VMs and the applications that you want to move to the cloud and it forecasts your WAN requirements, your storage requirements, especially when it comes to your journal and recovery disk size needs, your average IOPS, your throughput, and even VM level statistics, giving you full availability to understand how you need to size your 
your environment to be successful with Azure and Zerto. So as we've taken a look at these capabilities, it's really important to remember that Zerto is a true platform one true platform for all of your recovery scenarios, whether it's for disaster recovery, operational recovery, and even long-term recovery or, or retention or what people call backup. And it works within the cloud, especially with Azure and it's such a strong partnership and even giving you additional operational services. And this is all built on a foundation of continuous data protection with built-in orchestration and automation and complete visibility of all your sites. Now, these are technological differentiators and capabilities, but what about the economic impact, right? If you're choosing DR in the cloud, you're making an economic decision as well. So why not look for economic benefits within the tool and the orchestration tool that you're going to use to get there? And that's where we take a look at Zerto and how Zerto delivers our ROI to your organization. And we have dozens of case studies of how we've helped organization replace multiple point solutions and, and reduce the, the, the budget allocated to those to, to the full benefits of eliminating secondary sites, right? We saw with BJ's, they were able to achieve $800,000 in savings in three years with DR to a public cloud. Uh, we saw Richard's example uh, with Pruitt and how able, they were able to reduce testing resources as, uh, or dedicated resources to testing. You also see improved operational efficiency and just a direct avoided cost of downtime. Uh, Zerto really helps you maximize the use of your environments and giving you the full flexibility that your organization needs. Now, there was another very interesting study that we did called the total economic impact of Zerto IT resilience platform. And there was a lot of organizations here who were surveyed and of how Zerto was able to help them. Right. So what we saw was that prior to using Zerto, DR testing required the time of eight employees for three days each quarter, equating to 760 hours by the DR team. And if you kind of scroll further, you see that using Zerto, the organizations were able to save 2.4 FTEs or full-time equivalents in productivity each year for a savings of $204,000. Zerto doesn't just help you reduce the full cost or the capital cost of a secondary site, but what it does help you to is reduce the amount of time, the amount of resource that your organization needs to dedicate to DR because you're not only consolidating multiple use cases and capabilities, but it's simply just an easy button enabling you to do so. So just for further insights, I ask that you download the total economic impact of the IT resilience platform report done by Forrester. And it's going to give you a lot of more insights and especially the criteria that was used to make these uh, proclamations. So what I also ask for you is, if you actually want to just take a look at it, uh, especially if you're already a customer or thinking about it, uh, check out our labs. Check out our hands-on labs where you can simply see how Zerto works today with Azure. But if you're even just thinking about it as well, I urge you to check out our, our public Azure TCO calculator just to give you an insight of what's the cost and total cost of ownership that it is with Zerto and Azure if you're going to use it for cloud disaster recovery. So I want to thank you all for your time, and I hope that I can answer all of your questions throughout here as well. But one last thing I want to urge you to is to attend our last session. Uh, this is also a session sponsored by Microsoft, but it's going to be done by a Zerto and Azure expert as well. And his name is Alex Shank, and he's a systems engineer here at Zerto. And he's going to dive deep into not only how does Zerto really work with Azure at a deep level, but also what you need to do to make sure that your environment is working, that you can maximize the value of these two platforms. So with that, I urge you to attend in session and wanna thank you so much for your attention and time. Take care.